probably a lot of crabs. <laughs> anyway. Many of my besties, you, have been requesting a happy ending episode and not that type of happy ending to get your mind out the gutter. Okay, we're talking about an episode that doesn't end in insults and heartbreak, but what many would like to claim is real true love. So today we are going to be covering season six, episode 11 with Colleen and Tony, and this is an episode with our silver fox, Max. Colleen reached out to the show herself for help. She's 20 years old and she lives in Spokane. Spokane. She lives in Spokane, Washington, and she met Tony over three years ago on Plenty of Fish, and they've been together ever since, which red flag, red flag, red flag. Okay, girl, you said that you guys met three years ago. You've been together the three years. You're 20. I know math is not my strong suit, but 20 subtract 3 is 17. Mm, mm, mm. So you were 17 on a dating app, dating a man who at the time was 24. That's crazy. I'm 24, and I wouldn't even date anyone younger than me, let alone 17. She also looks way older than 20. I don't know what it is with people on this show, specifically in the earlier seasons, looking significantly older than they are, but something is up with that and I don't like it. But Colleen says that Tony is everything she has ever wanted in a man and more. Allegedly, apparently. She says that they fell in love very quickly and that they would always talk on the phone for extended amounts of time, usually until about 5 and 6 a.m. They usually only speak via text or phone call because every time that they've tried to meet up or even video chat, Tony has always had an excuse as to why it wouldn't work. We also find out that he doesn't have any social media, apparently, allegedly, which I... I find that hard to believe. So eventually she just got sick of his BS and she ended things, but recently she says that he came back into the picture and now he has a new excuse as to why he can't meet up. He says he now lives in Baton Rouge. Oh no. Which like, they don't have planes in Baton Rouge? Our bestie baddie duo then decide to hop on a video call with Colleen, something that Tony apparently can't do. So then we find out that Mr. Tony is a pizza delivery driver. He's now 27 and he lives with his sister. We then find out that the reason they took a break is because Colleen got sick of the runaround. She actually got into a brand new relationship, but then was cheating on her in real life boyfriend with her online boyfriend, Tony. Couldn't be me, but do you sis, I guess. So not too long after they reconnected, she ended things with her in real life boyfriend and- In the beginning of the year, he proposed to me. What? Yeah. She said yes. You stupid. She says that she has never ever been with or met anyone like Tony, so it was really easy to accept the proposal. And Neve makes a smart ass comment. But you've also never met him. <laughs> and he's right. But like, why did you say that? <laughs> They then ask her how she would feel if the guy turns out not to be the person in the pictures and she says that she'll be 100% okay with it because she doesn't want to let him go. That girl is Delulu in all the wrong ways. We support Delulu queens over here, but not this type of Delulu. Stand up! Stand up! So they hop off the call and Max says that this is not going to end well. At the end of this episode, will she be engaged or enraged? That was a bar. So the guys then head to Spokane and thank you for all of the people in the previous video where I was like, I don't know how to say it. They told me how to say it. Thank you. I love you besties. So they go to Colleen's house and immediately she says that she has something to confess. And it's like, girl, why, what do you have to say? And why do people do this? I haven't been completely honest. What? Like, they're going to find out the truth, so why aren't you just honest from the start? I don't know, it's weird. I hate liars. But she then confesses and says that her and Tony- We've only been seeing each other for like three months. And she says that she lied because she was embarrassed about the speed that their relationship was moving. She admits to being a, really a relationship hopper, which can't relate. And she says that she didn't want them to tell her that she's moving too quickly. And he's like, girl, how are you going to lie to hide the truth so that people don't tell you the truth that you already know? Are you okay? But this is also a crazy lie to tell because in the lie, she then suggested that her man was into minors. Everybody's so creative. Like, do people not think? There's nothing going on upstairs, apparently, allegedly. And she says that only a month after they started talking, he proposed and she accepted, which I want to say is crazy, but in other videos, I've already admitted that I'm a lover girl. I'm a Delulu level lover girl. So if I really love someone and they proposed after a month, I'd accept that proposal. We'd be married the next week. Lord have mercy. 
So I, I, I'm not shaming her for it at all. But then our guys, even Max, they start trying to collect information for their investigation. And we find out that Colleen has two different phone numbers for him. The first number he used for the first part, two days later, he's calling me off of another number. Which is a big red flag. They then ask to see his Plenty of Fish profile, which... Why do you have the profile if y'all are engaged? Why is the profile still up? For y'all to be engaged and both of you are still on the dating app is crazy. They then take a quick peek at his profile before looking at his pictures and Neve says that- he Oh, he's, yeah, he's a little like a normal nice guy. Which AKA just means an average white man, not a supermodel or anything. So it very well could be the person in the pictures that she is talking to. She then tells them that she doesn't go for looks, she goes for personality, which- With a lie detective determined that was a lie. <laughs> I feel like I understand the sentiment behind this statement. A lot of people say this, looks will fade, looks don't matter, blah, 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 blah. Be fucking for real. If I need to look at you, I need you to look good. To me, other people don't have to think you look good. I have to think you look good. So I just feel like people should be more honest. Like, looks are not the most important thing, but looks still matter. After they get all this information, she thanks them as they're on the way out, and Max says, Don't thank us yet. <laughs> Sarah, why would you say that? Max just came into this episode with a bad attitude and I relate to it because as we said, bad attitude girlies, we're all like this, we're locked in. Then the next day, they get to investigating. So the first thing Neve and Max do is to reverse image search the pictures and it comes back with nothing. Then they decide to run the first phone number, which comes back to Spokane, but unknown name, so nothing. Then they run the second phone number and it's attached to someone named Tim who's in his mid 60s and lives in Spokane. They look up Tim and they see profiles in Atlanta, Fort Myers, and Ontario, but they don't explore this lead any further. So I was just like, this seems kind of unnecessary. They have literally nothing else to look up because they have no other information. Neve then gets really annoyed and he says that to save time, they should just call Tony. So I feel like Neve and Max this episode are bad attitude girlies. They're just not, they're, they're not with it. They're so fed up, but they decide to call Tony and Tony actually picks up on the first ring. Hello? Yes, hi, is this uh, Tony? This is. Neve fills him in. Tony says that he does in fact live in Baton Rouge, but his Plenty of Fish profile says that he lives in Spokane because he used to live there. No one addresses why he still has the Plenty of Fish profile though, which I thought was weird. And this is why I think they need me on the show as a guest host because I'm asking all the questions. So Max then asks him like, bro, why have you not gone to visit your fiance yet? He doesn't say the bro part, but just, just roll with me here. Tony admits that he has reservations because he's not sure if Colleen is the person he thought she was. And they're like, what the, what do you mean? She wrote into the show worried about you and now you're claiming that you're worried about her? So they're like, what do you mean? What are you reserved about? What is going on here? And he says that Colleen lied about her age. She told me initially that she was 25. But she's actually 20. He claims that she only came clean after they were engaged. He then says that he's also concerned about her being irresponsible with money, which... <laughs> Okay, weird, because y'all have never met, but you're worried about her money. Odd. Then he says that Colleen told him that she was about to get a promotion, but when she was actually about to be fired, which is <laughs> the most insane lie. So she did in fact lose her job, and he claims that he has been financially supporting her ever since, and they're like, oh my gosh, how much money have you sent her? A little over 300, 400 bucks. Okay. Be fucking for real. Sir? How are you financially supporting her by sending her that little amount of money? $300 or $400 is not going to be enough to sustain someone. Please be so fucking for real. But Neve and Max, they eat this up, they don't even question it. And I'm just like, oh my god, what's going on here? What's going on here? No one's using their brains. He then says that the pictures are in fact really him, but right as they start to ask him more questions, his boss pulls up, so he needs to hang up. You don't find that suspicious. Neve says that they need to go back and grill Colleen and force the truth out of her because she has been lying to them this whole time. So then they decide to pull up back to Colleen and they fill her in on everything that they were able to find, which is literally nothing. <laughs> I feel like that's so embarrassing for this to be your career, your job. You've been doing this for six seasons now and you go back and you're like, yeah, couldn't find out anything. So then they tell her about the phone call. 
she says that Tony has never mentioned any of these concerns to her directly, so that was a little bit weird. Neve then brings up the fact that Tony said she lied about her age. My profile says 20. Never told him I was 25. And she has in fact been talking about her 21st birthday for the past two months, because then she's of legal age. She's excited to get rowdy. Max then brings up the loss of her job and asking him for money, and she says that she never asked him for money ever he's offered to send me money but i've said no but then he sent her 75 dollars anyways this guy stinks saying that you sent me 400 dollars and you sent me 75 dollars when i told you not to was crazy but also like now they've both proven themselves to be liars so how am i supposed to believe either of you neve is very fed up at this point and he says that they're not going to take sides they're just going to do what they said they would do which is help colleen and tony meet so Neve steps out to call Tony once again. He tells Tony Colleen wants to meet and Tony says that he is on the fence as to whether or not he's actually going to go through it but he does want to meet her too. He just keeps making BS excuses and like I said Neve was already fed up at the beginning of this episode so he's just like yeah okay whatever. How are you going to propose to somebody? Say you love them if you aren't going to be serious enough to meet up with them in person. That doesn't make sense. Stop playing with our girl. So Tony then confesses that he does really want to meet her, but uh, I lied about my pictures, and that's why I'm having reservations. And Neve is like, okay, whatever. Are you gonna meet or not? <laughs> He's like, I don't care. Let's get this episode over with. Tony then agrees to meet up, so they hop off the call. Neve then goes back inside and tells Colleen that Tony is not the guy in the pictures, and she doesn't seem to care, which is interesting. The trio then head out to Louisiana, Baton Rouge, and it's unclear if this is the same night or the next night, but the moon is out, so they definitely go at night. Then, in true dad fashion, on the way there, Max embarrasses Colleen as they board the plane. And she's engaged. She's never even seen him. <laughs> the next morning, Colleen says she's in her wedding outfit and she's excited and ready to meet this man. Which I would not be excited. And I would not be in a wedding outfit. You just lied to me. Maybe my boundaries are just too strong. I don't know. So then they decide to text Tony, and he says that he's at his cousin's house, but he's nervous, but ready to meet. So they pull up to the house, Neve goes to the door as per usual, while everyone else hangs back, and the police knock is very tame. I just feel like I didn't realize that he switches it up, like he picks and chooses when he's about to do this knock. But then out walks Tony. Why don't you step on out here? Sidebar, every time I've said Tony this episode, it makes me think about the fat-ass Kelly Price episode. Iconic. I covered it. Do you want to go watch it after this? Colleen then says to Max that he's a really good-looking guy, and she's confused why he would lie about his appearance. So we then find out that Tony's real name is Jeremy. He's very nervous. He's very smiley, to the point where he can't even look Colleen in the eyes, which is, I don't know, I thought it was kind of cute. Still fuck him for lying, but I thought this was cute. Then they ask him how he is, and he says, I'm awesome. All right, well, that's nice. <laughs> Colleen wastes no time. She immediately confronts him about the lies that he told Catfish about her age and the money. And he apologizes, but he doesn't say sorry, so to me it's not a real apology. But then he says that he made it all up because he was scared. Which, that'll make a lick of sense to me. He then says that he used the pictures of a white man because he has self-esteem issues, and he was worried that Colleen wouldn't accept him as himself. The woman was too stunned to speak. Things are about to get really crazy, so just hold on here, bestie. We then find out that at 18 years old, he lived in Spokane. I instantly loved the place. I wish I would have been born there. Always wanted to go back, so he was looking for women there. He said that because he's not a stereotypical black guy, he's more inclined to date Caucasian women. Pause the brakes. Just slam on him real hard here. What do you mean? Then it gets worse. He said that with white women, I can be myself, I can dress like this, I can watch science fiction movies. Insinuating that he can't be himself with black women or other women of color. That shit is so disrespectful. In the most disrespectful way, what the fuck does that even mean? Dress like this? My guy. You're dressed nerdy. Everybody of different ethnicities, different racial backgrounds dresses nerdy. I, what, I don't understand. He then says that he doesn't want to be viewed as a stereotype and that's what happens when he dates as himself, which is crazy because it feels like he's stereotyping black women saying that they won't accept him, that they don't want him. So it's like, how are you mad about someone doing it to you and then you're also doing it? Everybody's so creative. Okay. Which all of this to me 
sounds like thinly veiled self-hatred and i'm not too sure about miss colleen over there but me personally i could not be with someone who had this mindset he then apologizes but this time he actually apologizes and says sorry to colleen and he says that he hopes that she can forgive him she says that she can forgive him if he promises not to lie again so then he gets down on one knee and proposes still want to marry me I have mercy. Mm, mm, mm. Her stupid ass says yes because she doesn't want to give up on him. Neve and Max look so uncomfortable right now. They're looking at each other and looking around like, what the fuck is even happening? They don't seem happy for them. It's clear that everyone except for Colleen and Tony, or Colleen and Jeremy, my bad, can sense that something is off. But Neve plays it off like he's happy for them while Max just stays silent. You guys seem to really have the connection that you felt. For the past three months jeremy then says that his family isn't accepting of interracial dating but his family's approval is important and he wants them and colleen to meet but he warns colleen that it may get crazy that in and of itself is an insane stereotype that black people don't like interracial relationships and that his family is going to go crazy on colleen but I also feel like this was a big red flag to me because why would you not be upfront about this? Why would you only tell her this after she accepted your in-person proposal? That's weird to me. But for whatever reason, Colleen agrees to meet his family. They head over to his sister's house to do just that. His sister's name is Mika. This is your man. Yes, that's mine. And, and, I, and, that's, and, that's, and that's what you're going to settle for. I'm gonna stick beside him. So as they get in the car to head over to Mika's house, Max says that- I mean, this is crazy. Yeah, and Jeremy says that he's nervous to see how his sister is gonna take it. And I feel like this is such a fucked up situation to put your new fiance in. After you just submitted to all these lies, then you're like, yeah, let's go meet my family who might not like you. And I didn't tell them about you. So they're gonna be really thrown off to hear that I'm engaged. I would be running for the hills, but that's just me. That's just me. It doesn't take much for me to run away from a man. <laughs> <laughs> so they pull up to the house and jeremy's cousin jordan walks out he welcomes them and they go inside everyone gets acquainted neve and max then do most of the talking which is so confusing to me like jeremy should have done the heavy lifting since this is his relationship and his family he just seems like a really weird guy and not in a way that's like oh endearing and charming and kind of cute in a way that's like you don't have respect for yourself and so you won't have respect for colleen either and i oh so they're just looking at Jeremy like, why are we here? And Jeremy starts talking, but he's being extremely vague about the entire situation. So Max hops in like the real king that he is and tells them that Jeremy was pretending to be a white guy. And Max says this with a big old smile on his face. Like he's so messy and I love it because I'm messy too and you're messy too. And that's why we like each other. So Jeremy then admits, I feel more comfortable talking to Colleen when she was under the impression that he was not black. And his sister then looks at him and says what we're all thinking. Something wrong with black people? Mr. Jeremy? So then Jeremy straight up says that he does not mesh well with black women. This girl is delusional. Jeremy then says that black women do not like the things that he likes, such as reading comic books, playing golf. Black women I meet, they don't get my sarcasm. And I'm like, so that's what whiteness is to you? Being sarcastic and playing golf? And black women aren't sarcastic and don't like playing golf. His sister then says, What, we too ignorant because we black, we don't understand you? And it's like, call it like it is, please and thank you. Because this man is delusional in all the wrong ways. Just like Colleen. So maybe they are a match for each other. And Jeremy's sister, Mika, she is truly, truly the MVP of this episode. Because she's asking and saying everything that we're all thinking. So Neve then asks Mika if she's upset that Jeremy is with a white woman and she says no, that's his life. Like she does not care. She cares about all the problematic things that her brother is saying, the stereotypes that he's spewing, and the fact that he was not open and transparent about the fact that he is engaged and has been engaged for like two months. Colleen and Jeremy then step outside and then his sister is like, why would he lie about being white? And Max is like, we don't know, girl. But he's clearly conflicted about who he is. And Neve says that Jeremy's identity is a little foggy. Clearly, he's confused. He obviously has some identity issues that need to be sorted. And those are the two biggest understatements of the year, I think. It's always super alarming whenever a black man 
desires white women or desires whiteness because of their disdain and their hate for black women. Then the Delulu lovebirds come back inside and Jeremy's sister applauds Colleen for being so understanding and so respectful about this whole situation after Colleen says that she's forgiven him for all the lies and she does not care that he's black. Neve and Max then decide that it's a really good time for them to leave Jeremy with his family to continue these conversations off camera and thank god they did not leave Colleen there. Once they're in the car on the way back to the hotel, Max says that they're- Congratulations, you got catfished and you still have a relationship. 95 episodes deep and she is one of only two people who has been catfished and remained in a relationship with the catfish. I feel like maybe that's a, a big sign that you shouldn't be in this relationship, but if she wants to be happy, she thinks this is the love of her life, more power to you, girlfriend. And I just wanna say, I don't think that even Max were equipped at all to have the, the conversation about race that needed to be had. I think that's also why they just let the sister ask all those questions, but I think it's so weird to be in love with a man who clearly hates himself and hates black women, because then it's like, what if you guys have kids and you have a girl? So in our two month follow up, we find out that Colleen and Jeremy are actually together in Spokane. He says that he's out there just visiting, but he does in fact have a job interview with another pizza place to be a delivery man, and he's hoping it goes well. I just feel like I don't see how that type of interview couldn't go well. They came across shady, and I promise I didn't mean for it to be shady. <laughs> they say that they are still engaged, and they actually invite Max and Neve to their wedding. And even Max are like, yeah, if it happens, we'd love to be there. They don't mean that. Jeremy then says that he's trying really hard to communicate with his family, but he's having difficulties doing that. And I don't believe him. I think that he just wanted to create a whole new family, a whole whitewashed family, out in Spokane and leave his family behind back in Baton Rouge so I don't think he's really trying that hard to have a relationship with them. But that was the show's follow-up and then I did my own little research about what happened to them after because I'm nosy and I want to know if they're still together and I know you want to know if they're still together. It is clear that they did get married and in 2017 they welcomed their son named Tony which is spelled with an I instead of a Y which I thought was kind of funny. Like an ode to the catfish. Colleen and Jeremy, they seem to still be happily together. And she has an Instagram that's not very hard to find. So if you do go and find it, do not leave any mean comments. If you insist on leaving comments at all, they seem happy. So we're happy for them. And we haven't covered any happy endings yet. So this, I don't really know if it's a happy ending, but we'll get to that in a second. I can't find any of Jeremy's social media pages. So I'm assuming he still doesn't have any, or if he does have them, they're not public. But Colleen still has pictures and videos of him with their son on her page. So I'd assume that they're still together. Someone in the comments though on Colleen's Instagram is insistent that they aren't together, but there's no proof to back that up. So I don't really believe that. So this was the quote unquote happy ending episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I just feel like me, I wouldn't really consider this a happy ending just because she got with a man who hates himself. She's got a point. It seems like he just does not like the fact that he's black. He does not embrace anything about being black. And he tries to get as far away from that as he can. Hence his obsession with white women. And putting them on this pedestal above all other women. Which I thought was really weird. So I personally don't see their relationship as a happy ending. Because I don't think that he's a person who will ever be fully happy or satisfied with himself. I just don't understand how Colleen was able to easily just move past all the lies. I just feel like there's so many weird things that happened in this episode. And I would love to hear your thoughts, your feelings, and your opinions as well. But as per usual, thank you so very much for being here. Make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, and hit that bell notification button so you are aware every single time that I upload a new video. I have some exciting things planned for December. If you have other episode recommendations, make sure to let me know if you have other happy ending episodes or any other episodes that you would like to see me cover. Make sure to drop it down in the comments. People really wanted me to cover the next Ashley Taylor episode, and they also wanted me to cover Ashley Taylor's My 600 Pound Life episode. But if you want to see me cover that, let me know. So again, I thank you so very much for being here and I will see you in the next video.